Well, I've been in this enclosure, of course, Ivy's enclosure over here and uh, what is, used to be called Aries. So many times I've been sitting in here just kind of chilling out, but this is the very first time that I'm sitting in here with three anacondas. <laughs> That's right. We've got my girl Ivy over here chilling out. We've got Aries, which by the way, definitely still need a name. We're thinking about Ariana. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments if you've got a better name for Aries or you like Ariana. And then of course we've got their little baby. Well, when I say their, it's really just Ariana or Aries or whatever we're gonna call his baby because Ivy had nothing to do with this one. It's just obviously two females in here. So this was, like I had mentioned before, a virgin birth of an anaconda, which is just absolutely incredible. And we've been thinking about the fact that this is called Parthenogenesis. We've been thinking about calling this little girl Genesis. I just think it's a cute name and look at how absolutely adorable it is. I mean, it's so crazy now that I have, you know, Ivy and Ariana and I have Verde and how they're all getting so big to see a little baby anaconda. I still think this is one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in all the time I've been keeping reptiles. To have a virgin birth anaconda and for it to be an anaconda, a green anaconda, guys. We have a baby green anaconda. Again, I thought maybe Aries was a boy and that he would breed I and we'd have a litter of 10 or 20 or 30 baby anacondas, but that didn't happen. But we did end up with one, which is just absolutely crazy. Me. I'm still just over the moon happy about this. Every day I look at this little monkey right here, of course, Genesis, and I am falling in love with her. I know Lori's like, we don't need four female anacondas. But the truth is, they are all so special to me. There's no way I can get rid of any of them, right? I mean, I have to keep them all. I guess one day I'll just have to have a lot of big cages of green anacondas, but absolutely wonderful and just wanted to let you know. And remember when Genesis was born, it had a big kind of umbilicus still hanging up. And that's very common for live birth. Now that's all dropped off, all healed up, all looking perfect, and it looks perfectly fine. Now the big question is gonna be, will it eat for us here? And what is it gonna go? Remember, Beer Day took us like several months to eat, and then it would only eat live chicken. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I tell you what, I'm ready for that challenge because green anacondas are amazing and my little girl Genesis here is an absolute beauty. And good morning, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Of course, you know, life is like a box of crickets. You know, at least that's what our Reptile Army gear has to say. We have a ton of designs over there. Go to ReptileArmy.com. Choose your design. Become part of the Army. Of course, 10% of the proceeds go to USR. The rest goes to education. So you're helping out the reptile community reptilearmy.com. On to the egg cutting portion of the vlog. This is actually a fire yellow belly female bred to a pastel vanilla spider bamboo. So there should be some pretty interesting stuff in here. The mix of that fire and yellow belly with all those other genes should be really cool. Got two, four, six, seven eggs to cut. So uh, let's hope for some good odds here and some crazy combinations. Let's jump into egg number one. And these guys are definitely ready to cut. You can see they're desiccated. And that's what happens is eggs actually blow it up in the beginning and then start expelling water in the end and right off the rip we got something neat don't know what it is that's going to be the problem with this clutch i'm not going to lie to you it's going to be really difficult to figure out what it is definitely a bamboo definitely a spider i think I'm gonna take guesses on some of this stuff, right? So I'm pretty sure it's a fire, it's a bamboo, it's a spider. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Fire and vanilla make vanilla cream stuff. So we could produce vanilla cream stuff. There's a chance that this could be a vanilla cream spider bamboo because the vanilla and the fire are allelic that make vanilla cream. I, I guess that's why I bred them together, but I just realized that if I didn't think about it before, that was an awesome combination. So we could produce some, wow, I tell you, now I'm even more excited. So let's jump into egg number two. And again, until I actually see some other stuff, I'm not gonna be 100% sure even what that is, to be honest with you. Looks like we have just a little pastel vanilla here, uh, nothing too major here. So again, not as, as exciting as that first egg. Again, I'm still trying to think, I'm pretty sure that's a vanilla cream bamboo spider, to be honest with you guys. But then again, we might cut another egg and I might be wrong. So let's go ahead and see what egg number three has. This is exciting, man. I tell you what, I am stoked on this. And here, ooh, wow, this is, wow, okay, okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> this is, this is, I, I'm gonna try my best here. This is definitely a vanilla cream, okay? This is definitely a vanilla cream. This is definitely a bamboo, and it looks like it's a pastel, and it looks like it's probably a spider. So this is probably the all gene animal. It's got pastel, it's got spider, might not have yellow belly. That's maybe the only all gene. I don't know, I don't know how you even tell if it has yellow belly, but the vanilla cream for sure, spider for sure, bamboo for sure, pastel for sure. Wow! That is one ripper of an animal, and I'm almost, I'm, 
I'm gonna go out on a limb here, guys. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that is a world's first. I've never seen anything like that before. I'm pretty sure that we just hit a world's first right there. That is ridiculous. Now, the first one could still be a vanilla cream spider bamboo without the pastel. I'm not sure yet. We still have four eggs to go. Ooh, doggy. All right, wow, I tell you what, man, some rippers right here. All right, what do we got here? We have another one that's ripping. This one right here just looks like a bamboo spider, probably a vanilla. Could potentially be a fire, but not fire or vanilla, right? Because the fire and vanilla make the vanilla cream, wow, that's there's a lot to think about there. So, but it's still a cool snake. I, I'm loving it. We had three bamboos out of four eggs. Can't complain, three eggs to go. Wow, I tell you what, this has been a good clutch so far. We got a little darker snake in here now. Looks like just a bumblebee, to be honest with you. Could be a fire bumblebee or a vanilla bumblebee because it's definitely really clean, a lot cleaner than a normal bumblebee. So it's either a fire, probably a vanilla, to be honest with you. Two more eggs. Wow, I'm still blown away about a couple of these snakes. Absolute rippers, man. Ooh, we got another one. We got another one that's killer. We got another killer here. Ooh, let me see what we got, what we got, what we got. Ooh, ooh. I tell you what, I don't, ooh. I think this is another one. All right, so. I think this is another vanilla cream pastel bamboo spider. This one's even more faded than the last one, but I'm pretty sure that's what we have. So we have two of those animals. This one might be yellow belly. That's maybe why it's faded out. And then that might be the all gene animal. The other one, not quite as faded, might not have the yellow belly in it. I'm telling you what, this has been a banger of a clutch. One egg to go. We gotta finish it out with something awesome. I don't know how we're gonna beat what we already got, but let's try to finish it out good. Wow, oh wow. Some clutches you cut and you're just like over the moon about. And this happens to just be a fire yellow belly right here. So yep, just a fire and a yellow belly like the female mama. So uh, wow, I tell you, we hit some worlds first in here. I'm super excited. So it looks like Mike, you have a little helper down here. Yeah, yeah. she's helping so much. She's helping, be careful of Ari. What are we going to call Aries now? <laughs> so uh, we got to call it. Keep those name suggestions coming down for Aries. Look, you got a big meal over here. I love Ivy. He's just always so curious, you know what I mean? But uh, Mike is doing a good job making their enclosures look beautiful. I have to squeeze in some training. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually crushing things out a little early this morning. So as you guys are going to know, in the background, there's a lot of work, especially Mike working, as always. Got to pull Beetlejuice out play with them a little bit, see where we can kind of get, get going and try to find out where, where our progress is moving and what, what is the direction we're moving with them. Come on. Oof, not the face, not the face, not the face, not the face, not the face. It's okay, you're all right, bud, you're okay. He got a good meal yesterday. <laughs> all right, let's get you some open, open space and uh, that way he has a little less things to jump on. We actually fed yesterday, and it was interesting because I thought that Cupcake looked like she was maybe going into shed and wouldn't eat. She ended up eating for us, but guess what happened this morning? This beautiful shed. Look at this. The thing I love about boas when they shed is that you can still see their pattern. You know, you can see all their pattern. Now, a lot of snakes, you actually can see pattern and stuff like that. But when it comes to boas in particular, there's a really heavy pattern. You can set, definitely see there's no doubt that this is cupcake shed. So this is an absolutely beautiful shed. And she looks amazing. It's kind of surprised she ate yesterday, to be totally honest with you. And speaking of sheds, this is pretty awesome. Take a look at this shed right here. This is definitely not a shed from the Reptarium. This is actually Bruce's Timber Rattlesnake Shed. Look at that. And again, just like the Boa Shed, you can really see the patterning in that. I mean, rattlesnakes are amazing. Just think about that. Look at that perfect shed right there. You just have those little teeth in the mouth right there. You can see the eyes. I mean, that is an absolutely spectacular shed. Clutches of ball pythons are still coming. We're not done yet. We still have a bunch more to go. Uh, this happens to be a yellow belly female. And it was actually bred to this beautiful puma ball python that's also a McKenzie ball python. So we could get, again, a bunch of different combinations of ivory pumas, McKinsey stuff, all that type of stuff. Let's see how many eggs Mama has. Doesn't look like Mama's very happy with me. Don't, don't, come on, don't, don't bite me, don't bite me. Come on, girl, you did good, you did good. All right, there you go. Oh, get this off her. She's laid right back on the back of the cage. So we'll go ahead and get these off the paper real quick. And of course, once we get these set up, we'll get her all cleaned up 
fresh cage, you know, fresh smells, all that type of stuff. So that she's nice and happy. Got a couple boo bags here, but that's okay. Looks like 100% fertility. We've got two, four, six, seven beautiful eggs. I tell you what, we still have a handful of clutches to go. I'm going to miss pulling eggs when this day, this is over because it's been an absolutely incredible year. But you know what's the crazy thing is? We're literally like two and a half months away from starting the breeding season all over again. All right, guys. So I actually had out a Beetlejuice out for about an hour or so, and uh, it, it really was just actually kind of see where he what he was going to actually do. So I didn't want to mess with him too much. And as you can see, he's he's being pretty good right now. So um, so now we got to give him give him a little bit of a, a little bit of a confusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place him on the ground, and I'm going to try and keep it in an open area and keep him close to me. So the idea here is that I want him to look at to me as a sanctuary. So if he does get scared, I want him to run up on me and not run off, run off somewhere else. So like, uh, so let's get him on the ground. Let's see how he goes. Love big guy. Yeah. So obviously these guys are an arboreal species. With the size these guys are, I'd, I'd even argue to say they're a little bit more on the level of semi-arboreal. Because although they, they enjoy the, level, the heights, similar to like Asian water monitors do, they, they are often found on the ground as well. If he gets enough confidence in himself that he can walk around on the ground, he, anytime he feels scared, he goes to me, but anytime he feels fine, he just walks around and lets kids touch him and play with him all they want. So uh, if you guys notice why I why I touch and and, uh, and mess with these guys the way I do, I, I put my hands around their face and stuff like that, mainly because I don't really want kids poking, poking these guys around the face, but to be honest with you, there's not a lot you can stop a little two-year-old from doing. So, uh, if, so it, the best thing to do is actually treat them kind of like a two-year-old would, and that's be a little rough with them, but not not manhandle them, not hurt them. So I don't restrict his movement, but I will touch him, and I will play with him. So get used to it, and he'll understand that that's no longer something to be afraid of. It's really just part of life. Life is things. Sometimes things just like anybody else out there. Some, sometimes life can be a little annoying, but if you just persevere and get on through it, you'll be just fine. And he'll figure that out himself. Had some baby snakes hatch out that are absolute rippers. Of course, this is just a little vanilla bamboo ball python. The bamboo ball python's in that lesser complex or the blue-eyed leucistic complex, but I just love the bamboo stuff. It's one of my favorite incomplete dominant animals for sure. So that's just one of those. Then we have a combination of like some vanilla spider, some spiders, some pastel stuff like that. This is actually a really beautiful snake here. Too. This is actually a super pastel spider, what they would call a killer bee, but it's also a vanilla. So it's a vanilla killer bee, which is awesome. Then we hatch these two monkeys out here that are absolutely ridiculous. These are actually super pastel spiders, the killer bees, but then they're vanilla and bamboo. So they are super pastel spider vanilla bamboos absolutely ridiculous. I was excited about these for sure. This next clutch was some bangers. Remember the other day we cut the silver baby clutch? Well, these are the silver babies and some of the other stuff here. We have some, you know, just simple stuff like dragonflies, which is pastel fire pinstripes, which are absolutely beautiful. These would be possible head for azanthic. Then we ended up producing this little monkey here. This is actually a fire pinstripe azanthic. That's one of the silver babies. In the egg, I wasn't sure if it was a pastel or not. This one is definitely not a pastel, but look Look at how gorgeous that thing is. But this one here is actually the all gene, which is the firefly azanthic. So it's a pastel, it's a fire, it's a pinstripe, and it's a VPI azanthic. So these two here are absolute rippers. There's no doubt about it. The silver snakes are what I was really shooting for. But then, interestingly enough, we had this one out right here. This one is interestingly enough exactly like the female mystery ball python. Remember that female mystery ball python? This is what she looked like when she was a baby. No clue what's going on with this. Have no idea. It shouldn't have hatched out something like this. So there's obviously a gene that's floating around in some of my pinstripe females that are causing this kind of completely patternless animal. So here we have another mystery ball python. Now we have a bunch of those animals that'll be up to size to breed this next year so we can start to kind of figure out what the heck is going on. What's that hidden gene? But in this case, we hatched out another one. So hey, there's another one that goes on the shelf. We'll eventually figure this one out because it's absolutely ridiculous. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, don't you know? Right over here is a playlist. Please hit a video or two over there. If you do me another favor and hit that subscription button, that would mean a lot to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.